In today's interconnected world, organizations are increasingly dependent on secure authentication and access management systems to protect sensitive data and user identities. Various technologies like single sign-on or SSO, multi-factor authentication or MFA, identity and access management or IAM, and privileged access management or PAM play crucial roles in achieving secure and efficient identity control. However, it can be confusing to distinguish between these systems and their specific purposes. So in this video, we will break down the essential differences between SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM, helping you understand how each serves to enhance security in the digital landscape. Before moving ahead, let us quickly have a look at the agenda for today's session. So firstly, we will see what exactly is SSO. Then we will have a look at what is MFA and then what is IAM. And then we will come to the fourth point, which is what is PAM. Moving on, we will highlight some of the key differences between SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM. Next, after understanding the differences, we will also see few of the pros and cons of each of them. And then in the next part, we will see which one is the best option among the four. And finally, we will conclude this session by discussing how to choose the best option. I hope the agenda is pretty much clear and easy to understand. Before moving ahead, I want you guys to subscribe to MindMagic's YouTube channel and also hit that bell icon so that you never miss an update from us. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the first point over here is what is single sign-on or SSO. So SSO allows users to log in once and gain access to multiple systems without needing to sign in again for each service. It simplifies the user experience by enabling access to various applications through a single set of credentials. For example, imagine logging into Google and without needing separate passwords, you can easily access Gmail, Google Drive, and YouTube seamlessly. So now if you talk about key benefits of SSO, the first and foremost benefit is user convenience. So SSO highly simplifies the login processes. After that, and the next point is reduced password fatigue. So with SSO, fewer passwords are to be remembered, and this reduces the chances of password reuse. And the next benefit is centralized authentication. So with SSO, it is very much easy to manage from an administrative perspective. The next point is, what is multi-factor authentication or MFA? So MFA adds an extra layer of security by requiring users to provide two or more verification methods. So it typically includes something the users know, which is the password, and something the user has, for example, a phone or a token, and something the user is, which can be either a fingerprint or a face scan. So just to give you an example, when you log in into your bank account using a mobile application, so firstly, you have to enter the password, which you have set, and then after that, you also receive a code on your mobile device. So this is basically two-factor authentication, which can be a part of multi-factor authentication. So now if you talk about the key benefits of MFA, firstly, it greatly improves the security and it significantly reduces the chances of unauthorized access, even if passwords are compromised. And the second highlight over here is the versatility of applications. So MFA can be used across banking, healthcare, cloud services, and enterprise systems. The next point is, what is Identity and Access Management or IAM? IAM is a broader framework that encompasses all the processes, policies, and technologies used to manage user identities and regulate access to enterprise resources. So it ensures that the right individuals get access to the right resources at the right time. And now if you talk about the components of IAM, so basically here you have four components. The first one is the authentication. So through authentication, you verify who the user is. 
So most commonly, the authentication is done via the SSO or MFA. Next is authorization. So this means defining what resources the user is allowed to access. The third component is the user management. So with user management, you can create, update and delete the user identities. And in the fourth component, you have access governance. So with access governance, you can monitor and manage the user access rights. And now if you talk about the benefits of identity and access management. So the first benefit is the centralized control. With IAM, it is easier to manage the user roles and the user permissions. And the second benefit is the compliance. So IAM helps organizations meet regulatory requirements like the GDPR or the HIPAA. And thirdly, with IAM, you have improved security. So IAM ensures users have only access to what they need. And now let us see what is privileged access management or the PAM. So PAM focuses specifically on securing, managing and monitoring privileged accounts. So these accounts, which often have higher access rights than the regular users, are crucial for system administrators, executives and developers who may need access to critical infrastructure or sensitive data. And now if you talk about the key features of PAM, so here you have the privilege elevation. So with PAM, allows administrators to grant elevated permissions temporarily. Then you have session monitoring with PAM. So with PAM, you can track and record the activities of privileged accounts for the audit purposes. And thirdly, PAM gives you credential vaulting. So credential vaulting means securely storing and managing privileged credentials like the admin passwords. So this was all about PAM. And now let us move to the most important part of the session, what are the key differences between SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM? So guys, in this particular section, as you can see on the screen over the left, we have the aspects or the points of comparison between SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM. So there are four points on the basis of which we will be comparing all the four technologies. So let's get started with our first point, which is the primary function. So primary function basically refers to the main goal each technology serves within the context of access management and security. So if you talk about single sign-on, so the primary function of SSO is to simplify the user logins by allowing the users to authenticate once and access multiple applications or systems without needing to re-enter credentials. For example, if an employee logs in to their corporate network through an SSO system, they automatically gain access to all the applications within the company like email, HR systems, project management tools, and so on without needing to log in again and again for each application. Now, if you talk about the primary function of MFA, so MFA's main role is to enhance authentication security by requiring multiple methods to verify a user's identity. So instead of relying solely on passwords, MFA combines different authentication factors to strengthen the security aspect. For example, a typically MFA login process might involve entering a password, something which you know, and then inputting a code sent to your phone. And now if you talk about the primary function of IAM, so IAM is designed to manage user identities and control access to resources. So it provides a comprehensive solution for user authentication, authorization, and access governance. IAM manages who can access specific systems, what they can do, and ensures they are who they claim to be. For example, IAM would manage the entire life cycle of an employee's access from the moment they join a company to when they leave covering every step in between. And now if you talk about the primary function of PAM. So PAM is focused on securing, managing and monitoring privileged accounts that have elevated permissions. So these accounts, for example, system administrators often have access to critical systems. So 
PAM adds a layer of protection and ensures only authorized users can access highly sensitive resources. The second point of comparison over here is the security focus. So each of these technologies address security from a different angle. If you talk about the SSO, so the security focus of SSO is on the user convenience and centralized authentication. While it reduces the need for multiple credentials, it may create a single point of failure. So if someone compromises the SSO credentials, they potentially gain access to all connected systems. And now if you talk about the security focus of MFA, so here the focus is on user identity verification by requiring multiple methods of authentication. So it significantly improves the security by making it more difficult for attackers to gain access even if passwords are stolen. And now if you talk about the security focus of IAM, so here the focus is on centralized access control and ensuring users only have the permissions they need to perform their jobs. It ensures that the users can only access resources they are explicitly authorized for, thereby reducing the chances of insider threats or unauthorized access. And finally, if you talk about the security focus of PAM, so here the focus is on protecting high-level privileged accounts. Since privileged accounts have access to critical systems, they are often the primary target of cyber attackers. So PAM ensures that these accounts are closely monitored and controlled and that elevated permissions are granted only when absolutely necessary. The next point is the scope. So the scope of each solution defines how broad or narrow its functionality is within an organization's security framework. So if you talk about the scope of SSO, so here the scope is user authentication across multiple applications. So it doesn't handle fine-grained access control or user permissions so it simply authenticates users and provides access to several applications based on that single login. Now, if you talk about the scope of multi-factor authentication or MFA. So MFA has a narrow but deep scope in terms of enhancing the security of user identities. Its role is focused on ensuring that the person accessing a system is who they claim to be by adding layers of verification beyond just a password. The scope of IAM is a very broad one which encompasses the full life cycle of user identity and access control. So it manages user roles, permissions, authentication methods and access policies across organizational systems. So IAM is central to access governance and compliance management. And last but not the least, if you talk about the scope of PAM, so PAM has a narrow but critical scope focusing on the management of privileged accounts with elevated access. So unlike IAM, which manages all the user accounts, PAM specifically targets high-risk accounts that need stronger oversight. And now, in the fourth point of comparison, which is the common use case, we will be talking about one use case for each of these technologies. So each technology has its own ideal use case within an organization, depending on the complexity of the system and security requirements. So if you talk about SSO, so it is commonly used by enterprises with multiple services or applications where employees need quick and seamless access to different tools throughout their workday. Now, if you talk about MFA, so MFA is typically employed in sensitive industries like banking, healthcare, and e-commerce to protect user accounts and sensitive data. Any organization that deals with confidential customer information would implement MFA to add an extra layer of security. If you talk about IAM, so IAM is suitable for large organizations with complex hierarchies that need to manage user access across multiple levels. So enterprises, government institutions, and universities often use IAM to maintain strict access control across thousands of users and resources. And finally, if you talk about the use case of PAM, so PAM is most beneficial for organizations 
with critical infrastructure or sensitive systems. It is especially important for IT departments, financial institutions, and industries like the healthcare or energy, where certain users have administrative privileges over core systems. Guys, the last point of comparison between key differences between SSO, MFA, IAM, and PAM is which are the tools or platforms which make use of these technologies. So if you talk about SSO, so here we have Okta, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, AWS SSO, and CyberArk Workforce Identity. So if you talk about Okta, Okta Workforce Identity offers a robust SSO solution designed to streamline user access and authentication across your organization's suite of applications and services. Coming to Azure Active Directory. So this is a comprehensive universal directory that simplifies access management and strengthens security through its SSO capability. Now moving to the AWS SSO. So this is a cloud-based service that allows you to manage access to AWS resources, third-party applications, and custom applications from a single centralized location. And last but not the least, CyberArk Workforce Identities SSO. Here you can manage your passwords efficiently. So this solution allows users to access a range of applications and services with a single set of credentials. Now coming to MFA, over here you have tools or platforms such as Cisco Secure Access by Duo, IBM Security Verify, and Google Authenticator. So if you talk about Cisco's Duo Security, so this is an access management platform that prevents credential-based security risks and helps teams meet the regulatory compliance. Next, IBM Security Verify is an enterprise access management solution designed to help security teams govern access to data and applications. And the third tool or platform over here is Google Authenticator. So this is a two-factor authentication that adds an extra layer of security to passwords. So it uses a time-based one-time password as a second form of authentication for users who have enabled MFA. Moving on to IAM, here you have SailPoint, Symantec, and Oracle Identity Management. So SailPoint offers identity and access management software that empowers your team to centralize access for all applications and data from one single dashboard. If you talk about Symantec, which is by Broadcom, so this offers an enterprise-focused intelligent identity and access management platform. So IAM is a part of its identity security suite, which includes the SaaS-based VIP and advanced authenticating solutions. The third platform over here is Oracle Identity Management. So this emerges as a robust solution designed to simplify identity and access management for your IT team. And finally, if you want to talk about PAM, so here you have JumpCloud Open Directory Platform, CyberArk Privileged Access Management, and One Identity Safeguard. So JumpCloud's open directory platform securely connects privileged users to critical systems, applications, files, and networks. If you talk about CyberArk, so CyberArk Privilege Access Manager provides multi-layered access security for privileged accounts, enabling IT teams to secure, manage, and record privileged account activities. And last but not the least, if you talk about one identity safeguard, so this is a suite of PAM solutions that are available as individual models or as an integrated package, allowing customers to build new capabilities into their existing measures. Section, which is the pros and cons of each of the technology. So here we'll be starting with SSO. So what are the pros and cons of SSO? So SSO is best suited for organizations focused on user convenience who want to reduce login friction. Next, companies with many internal or third-party applications that employees frequently access. And thirdly, organizations looking to streamline authentication while keeping users satisfied with fewer login prompts. Now, here, an important point to understand is when to implement SSO. So if your organization has a wide range of applications 
particularly cloud-based services that employees need to access regularly or if password fatigue is an issue and users frequently forget their credentials or reuse the passwords else if you need centralized authentication and user access tracking for compliance and management purposes and now if you talk about an example scenario so let's suppose there is a company with employees accessing salesforce slack Jira and Google Drive throughout the day can benefit from SSO to simplify logins and improve user experiences. However, without extra security layers like the MFA, SSO alone can expose the company to a risk if the credentials are compromised. Now let us discuss about the MFA. So MFA is best suited for companies that handle sensitive data and are at a high risk of cyber attacks. Second, businesses that want to ensure secure access even if the passwords are compromised. And thirdly, industries with regulatory requirements for strong authentication methods like finance, healthcare or government agencies. So now the next important point over here is when to implement the MFA. So if you need strong authentication for applications with sensitive data, such as banking or healthcare platforms. Next, if you're concerned about the security risks or password breaches, phishing attacks or insider threats. And thirdly, if compliance regulations demand additional layers of protection. So in all of the three scenarios, it is highly beneficial to use the multi-factor authentication technology. And now if you talk about the example scenario over here, so financial services company could use MFA to add extra security for employees accessing banking systems or customers logging into their accounts. So even if a password is stolen, the second factor, which can be a one-time code, fingerprint, or a physical token, can ensure that only authorized users can log in. And now if you talk about the pros and cons of IAM, so IAM is best suited for large organizations with complex hierarchies that need comprehensive access control or the companies that need to manage user roles, permissions and access policies for various systems and businesses requiring centralized control over who can access what within the organization, often across different departments, regions or services. The next point over here is when to implement IAM. So if you need to manage the entire life cycle of user identities from onboarding new employees to revoking access when they leave, else if you have multiple systems, applications or resources that require differentiated access levels for different users, or if your organization is subject to compliance regulations that require you to govern access and track user activity. So in all of the three cases, it is best suggested that you use IAM technology. So now if you talk about the example scenario over here, a large MNC with thousands of employees and multiple departments can use IAM to ensure that employees only have access to the systems and the data that they need based on their rules. So this includes managing access to cloud services, on-premise applications and database. And in the next part, let us discuss the pros and cons of PAM or PAM. So PAM is best suited for organizations with sensitive or critical infrastructure such as IT systems, financial systems or healthcare environments or businesses with lot of high level users who need privileged access to perform system changes, administrative tasks or maintenance. Apart from that, industries where insider threats or advanced cyber attacks targeting privileged accounts are the major concerns. So in all of the three types of companies, PAM is the best solution. The next point over here is when to implement the PAM. So if your organization has system administrators, database managers or IT professionals who require elevated permissions to perform their duties or if you are concerned about insider threats or want to monitor what privileged users are doing with their elevated access. Else, the third point is, if compliance regulations require detailed auditing of privileged user activities, 
such as in financial services or healthcare industries. So in all of the three scenarios, it is best suggested that you use the PAM. So if you talk about an example scenario over here, a hospital with a highly sensitive electronic health record system can use PAM to ensure that only authorized personnel can access patient data or perform administrative tasks. So guys, let's move ahead to the next part. So the most important question is, which one is the best option among all the four technologies that we have just discussed? So now to pick the one among the four, what you can do is you can consider some factors while deciding which solutions to implement in your organizations. So some of the factors that can be considered are the size of your organization. For instance, small to medium businesses might prioritize SSO and MFA for ease of use and security without needing the full functionality of IAM or PAM. The next factor that you can consider is the risk profile and the industry. For instance, highly regulated industries like healthcare, finance, government agencies need security measures like the MFA, IAM and PAM to meet compliance standards. Apart from this, even tech companies or startups might prioritize SSO for user convenience and MFA for securing user identities in the cloud. The third factor is the nature of data and systems. So if your organization handles sensitive data, then you may need both MFA for authentication and PAM for monitoring privileged accounts. And if your focus is on simplifying access across multiple services, SSO combined with MFA might be the best approach to balance the security and convenience. And the fourth point or the fourth factor to consider over here is the current infrastructure. So what is the status of the current infrastructure that your organization has? So you, if you already have cloud-based or SaaS applications, you may need SSO and MFA to protect cloud access. So guys, finally, we have come to the end portion of this video. And here we will be discussing the conclusion. So what is the conclusion of this particular video? So there is no single best option, whereas the most effective strategy often involves a combination of SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM based on your specific needs. SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM are all vital elements in today's digital security landscape, but they each serve different purposes. So understanding the differences between these systems can help organizations build a more secure and efficient IT infrastructure. So by leveraging these tools correctly, businesses can enhance their cybersecurity posture, reduce risks and ensure compliance with industry standards. So guys, that's all from my side in this particular video on the differences between SSO, MFA, IAM and PAM. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you have thoroughly understood whatever we have discussed in this particular videos. If you have any doubts or queries related to this video, then you can write them in the comment section and we will try to resolve your doubts and queries as soon as possible. So guys, once again, thank you so much for being with us and I'll see you in the next one.